if you look at how the value chain goes there's a farmer there's a broker then there's a series of brokers by the time the food actually gets to you know the, the main mandi and then to us and i think all of these brokers do add value mm. because there is aggregation that is required at every step of the way and without that aggregation economies of scale just don't kick in correct um so i th- i think that is required uh, a new model I, i won't say it's new but a model that's been getting recent focus is the um, farmer producer company model mm. uh, which is which is companies that are owned by the farmers themselves mm. essentially 1000 2000 farmers come together create a company they buy inputs in bulk they sell uh, output in bulk uh, they have the ability to do primary processing you we've seen some you know consumer brands come out of these i think that's that's a very very good model in terms of uh, involving the farmer uh, in the entire entire value chain and you know whatever profit the company makes since the farmer is a shareholder just just goes back to that Welcome to another episode of the brand called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. I am your host Ashutosh Garg and today I'm delighted to welcome a young and an accomplished entrepreneur Adwitya uh, Adwit, Adwit, Mal. Uh Ari, welcome to the show. uh pleasure to be here sir thank adi is the, thank you adi and is the ceo and co-founder of em3 agri services private limited and in the recent covid times he's founded or co-founded an amazing uh, uh app which is doon.com that gets plasma to a lot of people so adi let's talk about em3 agri services private limited tell me about this venture um so essentially sir we are a farm mechanization services provider um, i know that sounds like a mouthful so i'll just explain what that means yeah um you know in a country um of our nature we are we're essentially a, a country of small farmers mm. um 90% of farms are uh, are below 10 acres uh, and it doesn't make sense for farmers to invest in machinery to to do the work um and usually you know the the productivity goes up when you apply mechanization um but um you know there is no real option that a farmer has uh, other than invest in the machinery because what his backup plan was which was farm labor over the course of the last you know 10 15 years been rapidly disappearing from the fields mm-hmm. um so the farmer does end up buying equipment like you know basic tractors and and um, you know basic equipment Mm-hmm. uh and often ends up in a vicious cycle of debt i'll, I'll give you a small example i mean mm. a, a typical farmer who's you know let's say a 5 acre farmer will probably make profits of about 3 3 1/2 lakhs a year from the farm a tractor emi alone is a lakh and a half a year wow. um so obviously it doesn't make sense to to make that investment but they don't have an option mm. <clears throat> uh what is really needed is a is a pay for use service um where you know you can fractionate the ownership of these these valuable uh, value creating machinery mm-hmm. uh and pay only for that much as you use mm-hmm. almost like a taxi um and farmers do share equipment with each other but they don't really have any high quality standardized um service provider mm-hmm. and that's where we come in. okay uh we provide these machinery services on demand with high quality uh machines with trained operators uh, delivered on time um and essentially you know we we are we are organizing a, a very very disorganized and inefficient sector mm-hmm. uh, we've been called the you know the uber equivalent of agriculture or the the meru equivalent of of agriculture but but we prefer being known as um, you know the the people who pioneered the farming as a service model um so you've got software as a service where essentially farming as a service very interesting uh, where the farmer can get uh, services um you know on call on an app on a pay for use basis he pays by the acre by the hour um a trained operator comes in and and does the job mm. we now have um, 
we now have about uh, over 300 centers uh, service centers um, in madhya pradesh uh, rajasthan and, and uttar pradesh mm-hmm. and from these we we cater to almost uh, 4000 villages it's um, it sounds like a large number but it's actually a drop in the ocean in the mm-hmm. context of india mm-hmm. uh, but you know it is it is not an immaterial operation no. so it's uh, significantly sized Mm-hmm. Um, we were one of the first companies to implement this model back in 2015, and obviously we've gone through various stages of learnings and and evolutions. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're happy to say, you know, we've got a great company. We were happy to count Mahindra and Mahindra, um, Cafe, um, Escorts as as you know large, big, serious players who who are part of uh, uh, this market as well and who along with us are creating this um, you know new paradigm they run their own they, they run their own businesses independently but you know we're all all three four of us are, are creating the new paradigm for for agriculture um so that's who we are interesting very interesting so you know you've been working with farmers for the last five odd years or five or six years what would you say are three key issues that most small farmers in india face I'd say, you know, firstly, I, I think there is there is still even in, in this day and age uh, um, an information gap. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think information um, on what to grow, how to grow, um, and you know what is also a function not just of of um, it, it's a function of how the markets are evolving. It may make sense to grow something this year; it may not next year. Um, so I think that needs to be dynamically. Uh, updated. Um, there's no point growing more onions if the prices of onions are crashing, right? And that's really what happens. Everybody is growing onions, and the prices come down. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we read about that in the papers. So that's Correct. just one example. Uh, but you know, I think that that information gap still uh, needs to be needs to be bridged. Uh, people are coming online. Um, the last one year has obviously accelerated some of that shift. Um, so that's one piece. I think. Um, information without, um, you know, uh, handholding uh, becomes futile. So I think there's a fair bit of handholding that's also required, uh, which is okay. So we've told you what to grow, and we have recommended how to grow it, uh, but you still need the machine. You still need the the right kind of methodologies. You still need the right kind of inputs, mm-hmm. and so on. So I think there's a fair bit of handholding that's also required uh, as we come along. Or as we go along, um, so I think that's that's one piece. I would say information and handholding. Um, I feel there is there is a fair bit of work, and you know a lot of work is happening actually, uh, rightfully so, on on creating the right kind of market linkages. Uh, when you know once the crop has been grown, it can be sold in the right manner, mm. um, get the best price possible. Sometimes that also means um, you know storing the crop. And waiting to sell it. So I think that infrastructure has been cre- has been created over a few years, continues to get created. But I think that's another area where mm-hmm. uh, where farmers uh, can benefit from uh, dramatically. Mm-hmm. And lastly, I, I think financial inclusion. Um, and 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 I, I mean in two parts. One is credit. We we all uh, recognize or should recognize that agriculture is a by design a seasonal business. Mm-hmm. Um, there are times when investments happen, um, and then there are times when those investments uh, reap rewards for a farmer. So when he harvests, after investing on the crop for three, four years, uh, three, four months, is when he gets back his money. So there is lumpy cash flows in the in the ecosystem, uh, and that's where credit plays a role. Mm-hmm. I think that's one piece where uh, you know uh, farmers will benefit. Um, again, there is a fair bit of work happening in, in that direction as well. Um, and insurance. Um, so far, our insurance coverage has been, um, we're early in the insurance coverage piece for as far as uh, agriculture is concerned. Uh, but we must recognize that, you know, a, a farmer exposes himself to a lot of risk um, in the business of farming. And we must find um, interesting products that that uh, can mitigate those risks i think net net we, we need to start looking at agriculture as a business um, which it rightfully is you know, for, for majority of the population it is a business correct i agree 
So, you know, you, when you look at the state of the state of the farmers, you know, in, since 1947, every party has been promising, but nobody seems to deliver for them. And it's the same set of farmer promises that I keep hearing, you know, over the years. I wanted to ask you, how can a farmer or how can farmers get a much larger chunk of the farm to fork value chain? Hmm. So, sir, I, I think, um, firstly, you know, I, I think it's important to recognize that farming is fairly complex and, you know, it's not possible to see all of agriculture with just one lens. Sure. Every crop has a different sort of value chain, uh, which requires different solutions and, and, and so on. Um, and, you know, it's it's obviously some, not something that can be done <clears throat> in a centralized manner. It has to be decentralized. Decision making has to be decentralized. And, and like I mentioned earlier, agriculture is essentially or, or you know, it's essentially molding nature, mm. uh, which is fraught with complexities. Mm. Like that's what we're trying to make plants grow in a certain way. Um, that comes with its own, own fair share of um, complexities. And, and you add on top of that the fact that we've kind of overdone the subsidy story. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, you know, over the, in the initial years of, of, of the country, I think subsidies were required to provide farmers that, that uh, um, that protection so that they can grow mm -hmm. um, you know that economic shell if you will but i think over time that's become a, a habit and and maybe it's not allowed the sector to adopt market driven principles mm -hmm. and therefore not be competitive enough in in the global markets um, i don't know if you know this but you know india is 10 percent of the arable land in the world Wow. And if we can make India, uh, you know, more productive and more competitive, uh, we can actually fix the world's food problem. Right. You know, we can so, be the food basket of the world. So, you know, so I, I think there's a fair bit of potential. Mm -hmm. But to your specific question on, you know, how how can farmers benefit in, in the entire value chain? I, I, I think by actually participating in the value chain and, and you know, it's difficult for a small farmer to do that. Um, but if you look at how the value chain goes, there's a farmer, there's a broker, then there's a series of brokers by the time the food actually gets to you know, the, the main mandi and then to us. And I think all of these brokers do add value mm. because there is aggregation that is required at every step of the way. And without that aggregation, economies of scale just don't kick in. Correct. Um, so I, th I think that is required. Uh, a new model, I, I won't say it's new, but a model that's been getting recent focus is the um, farmer producer company model, mm. uh, which is which is companies that are owned by the farmers themselves. Mm. Essentially, 1,000, 2,000 farmers come together, create a company, they buy inputs in bulk, they sell uh, output in bulk, uh, they have the ability to do primary processing. You, we've seen some you know, consumer brands come out of these. I think that's that's a very very good model in terms of uh, involving the farmer uh, in the entire entire value chain and you know whatever profit the company makes since the farmer is a shareholder just just goes back to that. I think it's a very good concept. Um, obviously, a lot of work needs to be done to 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 increase the capacity of these farmer producer companies to create more farmer producer companies uh, and so on. But I think that's. That's that's the only way the farmers will, I mean, in my view. I mean, I'm sure there are other ways, but as I see it today, that's so. Tell me, I mean, you know, you are, you have taken uh, as EM three uh, tractors, threshers, you know, uh, and a whole lot of other types of equipment to farmers, uh, you know, in an uh, Uber kind of way, as you said yourself. Tell me, how is technology beginning to change farming and yields? So um, I think there are, again, you know, one can look at it in, in three or four different categories. Mm -hmm. um, I think firstly, digitization itself, um, whether that's of the farmer, of the farm, um, of the crop, mm -hmm. uh, I think all of these allow um, information to move fast and therefore decision making to move fast mm -hmm. and therefore bring in um, uh, you know considerable amount of 
efficiency into the overall system mm-hmm. and bring down transaction costs i think this is very sort of generic what i've just said but that's really what's happening in okay. in agriculture i think mm-hmm. this 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 um, this uh, this sort of trifecta between data on the farm data on the farmer and data on the produce getting mm-hmm. all of these together mm-hmm. actually allows for um, you know the foundations of doing uh better decisions or mm-hmm. making better decisions mm-hmm. I, i think that's one piece once you take this and you link it to what the market is doing i go back to the onion example mm-hmm. right uh once you link it to what the market is doing and you can communicate that to to the farmer and you know suggest or recommend what he should be doing um then you suddenly get um you know fast moving information which actually helps the farmer also mm-hmm. uh, make more money Uh, and make better decisions and this is possible i mean uh, a lot of startups are working on the digitization piece i feel so are in fact some of the large companies mm-hmm. in the financial services space uh, but i also feel that you know we with things like um, uh, um, uh, enam and so on which the government has been doing uh, we're getting more and more richer uh, data on what is happening in the agri commodity markets i think mm-hmm. as these both evolve there'll be a there'll be a, a a space where you know information starts moving mm-hmm. seamlessly mm-hmm. um i i think the other area is um, you know the the internet of things um which uh, essentially allows farmers to to make very precise decisions mm-hmm. um you know rather than taking a decision on ye mera 5 acre ka khet hai and this is what i'm doing for the entire 5 acre mm-hmm. uh, i can actually now technologically i am able to bring it down to one square meter mm-hmm. and treat every square meter differently um it's obviously some of these things have have uh, have longer adoption curves um but as you know farmers move to more higher value crops i think some of these things uh, do do start becoming important from from a productivity perspective interesting so are you now let's move to uh, you know the uh, to to uh, to dhoon.com um, okay. you know which i know is being seen and uh, you know a lot of support is being provided to patients of covid tell me about this venture and what made you start it okay so um i i think you know in um in 2020 when the first lockdown happened then everyone was having a holiday including us mm. i mean i wasn't having a holiday i was involved yeah. obviously in mm. uh, you know working through uh, the chaos that it came with mm. uh, but it was in lockdown there was you know the virus was happening somewhere out there yeah. and we were reading about it in the papers it wasn't in our no zone. Life. yeah uh it wasn't in our life um and then in may my father in law got infected and suddenly it became very real mm-hmm. that you know the virus hair actually mm-hmm. uh and then he got infected he had to get hospitalized um he went into the icu and then the doctor said you know we're going to try and uh, do this uh, therapy called plasma therapy can you arrange a donor mm-hmm. and we had no clue what that meant what the donor was and you know what kind of donor we needed to get and so mm-hmm. on Mm-hmm. um so we got whatever details we had we found somebody using typical whatsapp call everybody you know on your phone book and and see if anybody's got covid bring them in we found somebody it took us you know 3 days to find someone on the third day we realized that blood group nahi match kar raha then we fa- had found somebody else we realized ki you know women who have conceived can't be donors and so on so we started the whole thing again the whole process took about 5 days mm. um fortunately i mean we did find a donor the therapy was carried out uh, my father in law recovered he came back and mm. you know everything's fine touch wood mm. um but you know that experience also th- made us think here uh, surely there's a better way of of finding something in the mm. 21st century i mean you can find a pizza you can find yeah. you know a restaurant you can find a car we can find a donor right mm. um and and um, and and then you know i i thought myself i i thought to myself that you know they should make a system like that and then i thought to myself who is this they mm-hmm. um ultimately it's uh, you know in a in a situation like this 
the government can only do so much this is a new situation for them as well and you know it's going to have to be citizens which kind of step forward and and, and join the fight mm-hmm. um so soon after you know um this was early june i called up a childhood friend of mine uh, in the uk mukul um and i spoke to my wife and i said you know let's try building a platform which connects uh, critically ill patients to plasma donors mm-hmm. and it it will make it a simple platform i know it's doable uh, and let's try to do it in you know uh, as fast time as possible mm-hmm. mukul uh, is is a technology a technology guru i'm not i just have a very healthy respect and appreciation mm-hmm. for that mm-hmm. uh, but he is and so he built a platform in like 5 days um and we rolled it out um in the middle of june and it just kind of because it was the need of the hour yeah. it just took off um i i and we were lucky in that you know we, you know i i think what happens is when you when you want to help then things conspire around you to yeah. enable that help right so we we just said let's help i mean it's it's from the goodness of our hearts this is just a i mean there's no there's no business model or anything it's just let's just help um and and suddenly out of the blue the asian medical student association called up mm-hmm. and said you know we want to join you uh, in this effort and overnight we had 100 volunteers mm-hmm. that were working on this with us um so we started in delhi and through the course of the first wave uh last year we you know we reached about nine states um we we helped um, over 2000 patients uh last year um uh, in the last one month of course i mean it's it's just gone through the roof we're we're dealing with almost 4000 patients on a daily basis okay. fortunately in the last couple of days it started to come down mm-hmm. um but you know that was the kind of um, load that the system was 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 experiencing and and you know we because that was the kind of load we actually reached out and and i'm very grateful people like um, amazon google and facebook have also jumped in and said you know we'll support so you know we're using uh, some of their services which are coming from them entirely free mm-hmm. of course amazing um, so i i think that's uh, that's, that's something that i mean that's that's an amazing way to give back and i know how many people uh, are now getting relief because of your app you know incredible so ari i'm going to now move to the last segment of a conversation which are a few questions for you first that i think i have time for two maybe three questions okay uh my first question to you is that you know you were doing so much work in agriculture you decided to give back through dhoon what are some of the core values you believe in and it's a tough one um i i think um so selflessness i do believe um in i you know it's something that i value mm-hmm. um it's something that i value in other people and i also value in myself and i try to do that as much as i can i i'm very fortunate to have been born in the time and place that i was in the mm-hmm. family that i was um and you know i think it's 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 very important to respect and appreciate that and and you know maybe that's that's at a very subconscious level where i come from in some of these things that i do mm. um so i think that to me you know the ability to put others needs ahead of yours mm. i do value sometimes i overdo it but i do value that um grit and tenacity is you know something that again i uh hold in very very high regard mm-hmm. um i'm very very um uh, inspired by that dialogue of of rocky i don't know if you mm-hmm. if you recall it it's not it's not you know uh the stronger or the the guy who moves the faster mm-hmm. who who wins the match it's okay. it's the guy who gets beaten the most and keeps bouncing back i think that's uh to me how you know um i see a lot of what we do in life uh, professionally and otherwise um, does have pushbacks and it always does and as a startup guy it's all the more so every day is like that so i think 
I think that grit and resilience is something that I I definitely value. Um, I, I like fighters. Hmm. Um, and lastly, obviously, I think um, most people do is, is integrity. Hmm. Um, I think that is something that I definitely very well said. Very that's well said. how I live my life and, and I value it in others. Very well said. So I'm going to come to my last question now, and this is a question I was debating what to ask you, but I think I'm going to ask you this question on failure. You know, and I've often said that parents in India, you know, I'm a parent, you're a parent. Uh, parents in India or Asia don't teach children it's okay to fail. We're always told, come first, go to the head of the line, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yet we fail, we make mistakes. So my question to you, Adi, is what have been some of your learnings from some of your mistakes? I've had a lot of, um, I would say, tactical learnings through every mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, that, that list is so long, you'll probably be uh, recording for another two, three hours and I still won't have gotten through it. Mm-hmm. But I think the one core thing that, I, that I've learned is to chill. Okay. Um, you know, to accept that failures do happen. Mm-hmm. Um, the only sure shot way of not failing is to not do anything. Mm-hmm. So if you're doing something, there is bound to be some failure. As long as you know you are fifty one percent right, mm. you are still okay. Okay. And the attempt should be to go from fifty one percent closer and closer to hundred. It'll never be hundred. Wonderful. Um, so I think that's one. Accept that. Jo hota hai, achhe ke liye hota hai. And sometimes I also believe that you know you fail or I fail because I was not. Um, I was not. Um, what's the word? Capable enough uh, to carry the responsibility of the success should I have succeeded. Very well I think, um, you know, that's one piece that I've learned. Adi, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you. I mean, I've known a lot of things that you've been doing through many conversations we've had. But I think today's conversation has given me even more insights into what you're doing in EM3 and, and, and how excited your face was actually lighting up when you were talking of Dhoond. So I think, uh, you know, you uh, are giving back some amazing stuff to the people. Thank you again and good luck. Thank you for having me, sir. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.